If you hunt in a state where it's legal to use thermal imaging equipment, you have got to get your hands on a thermal monocular. In this video, I'm going to give you my full, honest review of the AGM ASP TM160 thermal monocular that retails for under $400. If it performs anything like its peers in that under $1,000 category, it could be a game changer. Let's do it. Thermal technology looks for radiated heat from a subject, so it's looking at the difference in temperatures between various objects. That means it can also detect where something warm was recently, just like my son's footprints in this clip. By comparison, night vision depends on infrared light reflecting off of a subject. Each one has its own applications. Thermal technology, in particular, less expensive thermal technology generally offers less detail than night vision. Again, we're talking about lower price points here. But a thermal monocular doesn't need ambient light or additional infrared flashlights in order to operate. And you can see around some brush to help you follow your subject. We love thermal monoculars for a variety of hunting purposes, including scouting, tracking, and the retrieval of down game. They're also useful for home security applications. Here you can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the AGM, ASP Micro, and the FLIR Scout TK. We'll give you several comparisons throughout the video. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing. We're gonna get our first look at it right here live with you guys. Got all of our technical specifications on the bottom. And here we got some marketing materials warranty cards, and the like. Got our user's manual right here on the top. Read that later. Got a cleaning cloth here for the lens. Now we get our first look at the unit. It's pretty compact. It looks a lot like the FLIR Scout TK. Not much heavier in the hand. Sleek design. Looks nice. Got a threaded port on the bottom for mounting right onto a tripod. I like that. When you're out in the field, it's really helpful to be able to use this thing hands-free and keep it really stable when you want to film video. Got a built-in rubber lens cap. I really like that for not having to keep up with it when you're out in the field. Weight in the hand, not very much. It's going to be really light in your pack. Looks like you've got a USB Type-C charger and they give you a USB wall plug, which is nice. Not a lot of units do this anymore. They expect you to kind of have your own. All right, that's about it. No frills, everything that you need in the box, nothing more. We're actually out here testing a bunch of new toys today. Ryan with his new ATV. I'm gonna do a field test and a side-by-side -side comparison of this thermal at different distances with a comparable unit from FLIR so we can see how well they compare. My dad's over there just hacking off tree limbs with his new knife. <laughs> it never gets old. So our unwitting volunteers today will be Pepper the small hog, my dad, the mature buck, and Ryan, more of a yearling. All right, I'm gonna start these guys out at 25 yards and then we'll back them up 25 yards until we get to 150. We don't have 150 yards to be able to get down there. You gonna make us go down there? I'll come get you, goodness. Oh my lord. 22, take three steps back. So now we're gonna get our first look at these things right here side by side. The AGM is looking pretty good at 25 yards, especially the subjects. I can see a little bit of difference in the detail in the background. Look at those branches on the left-hand side on the FLIR versus the AGM. The AGM background looks a little bit foggy and I'm wondering if it's gonna struggle a little bit as the distance increases. But overall, it's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the zoom feature on the AGM. It is a digital zoom, which means it's just magnifying what's on the LCD display. I'll also cycle through these color palettes just to give you a view of those, but I'll do this a couple more times as well. Four more yards, Dad. Huh? Four more. That's good. At 50, the AGM is still looking pretty good. I can see the subjects very well, even though the overall image is a little bit foggy compared to the FLIR, and I can see less detail in the surroundings in the AGM. If I'm hunting at 50 yards, I don't care. I can see three heat signatures and I can tell what I'm looking at, which is vital when you're hunting. I can tell that I'm looking at a large person, a small person, I can see arms, hands, and that there's some kind of ground gremlin running around out there. I can't tell if Pepper's a dog, hog, or coyote, but that starts to get difficult at this range with a lot of devices. Six more, Dad. That's good. At 75 yards, I gotta be honest, the differences are starting to fade for me a little bit. Both of these units are starting to struggle. I can still see that I have three heat signatures, but I can't exactly tell what they are. The zoom feature on the AGM is still slightly useful in that I can still see that I have two humans out there, but I can't tell what Pepper is. 
At 100, the AGM looks noticeably foggier to me. I can still see the two larger heat signatures, but here's the main difference. Watch when Pepper runs across the screen. She's barely visible on the AGM, and on the FLIR, I can at least tell that there's something of medium size out there. And the zoom is minimally helpful because it's so blurry at this distance. At 125, both units are starting to struggle. I'm starting to split hairs here a little bit, but I still see slightly more detail in the FLIR. I'll go ahead and cycle through these color palettes for good measure, and I'll show you the zoom feature on the AGM again, but again, too blurry to really be useful. At 150 yards, yeah, I'm not seeing much usable detail here, but I guess I can see heat signatures and that's useful if I was tracking down game. But I did recognize a unique opportunity from having dad and Ryan this far away. Go back a little further, going back to the very end back there. Let's take a look at some of the basic technical specifications of the AGM as compared to the FLIR. The AGM is comparable in size, but both units are very compact and easy to carry. The AGM has a zoom feature while the FLIR does not, but this is digital zoom. I didn't really find it that useful. Battery life is superior on the AGM, basically double that of the FLIR, but I've never found battery life to be an issue with either unit. Internal storage is significantly larger on the AGM, but the video files each unit stores are so small, I've never found storage to be an issue. MSRP really favors the AGM at about a 33% discount over the FLIR, retailing for under $400. Now here's where it gets real. The sensor resolution is the same for both units, and the LCD resolution, the number of pixels on the display, and the refresh rate, how quickly the screen refreshes, appears to favor the AGM. All that together with a greater pixel pitch, meaning more energy reaches each pixel in the AGM, we'd expect the AGM to be more sensitive and produce a sharper, more detailed image than the FLIR, right? But there are a lot of factors at play here, all at the same time. Remember what we saw during the field test. The FLIR performed slightly better. Not a lot better, but slightly better than the AGM. The main difference I can see is in the objective lens, which is noticeably larger on the FLIR, essentially allowing it to detect more radiated heat for the same sensor resolution and a fairly similar pixel pitch. Ugh, that's a mouthful. But you have to consider all these factors when you're evaluating which unit to purchase. Let's take a look at the basic operation of the unit. A long press on the power button turns it on, and it does take some time to boot up. I don't love that. But here's a feature that I really do like. A short press on that power button activates sleep mode, which is really nice. If you put it to sleep, it takes a lot less time for it to boot up and it really saves your battery life. Short press on that camera button takes a picture. Long press on the camera button starts video recording. Another long press on the camera button turns the video recording off. Each press of the mode button cycles through the available color palettes. The magnifying glass cycles between one, two, and four X zoom. You can see the value changing in the top right corner of the screen. A long press on that mode button brings up the menu. In hindsight, that M might stand for menu. There are a ton of different options in here, screen brightness and a bunch of other things. Check out the manual to learn about each one of these. There are too many for me to walk through in one video. But I do wanna tell you about one of my favorite features. It has built-in Wi-Fi, so it can stream straight to your phone through the AGM Connect app. That means whoever you're hunting with can watch what you're looking at through the device on their screen, or you can record what's actually going on on the unit right there on your phone. The ability to stream and share what you're seeing is a lot more fun when you're hunting with somebody. More often than not, we're using thermals when we're pig hunting, and that's how we tested this AGM. We had a nice boar come in at about 35 yards. The things that jump out to me about the AGM are that just like we saw in the range test, at this distance, I can clearly see the heat signature and I can easily tell what I'm looking at. Now, this is a big pig. If it was smaller, as we'll see in a second, it might have been harder to tell what it is but the subject in the foreground looks pretty good, even if the background is overall foggy and lacks detail. Speaking of detail, I mentioned earlier that less expensive thermal devices often give you a less detailed view than night vision. Here's a comparison that explains why I'd say that using the ATN X-Sight 4K Pro night vision scope. Night vision and thermals both have their uses, so you have to think carefully about which is right for you. All right, back to the AGM. Here's a look at the digital zoom in a real world scenario. Again, it's too blurry to be very useful. I found the four color palettes to be more than adequate. For comparison's sake, here's that pig walking back into the clearing from the back and a fat raccoon walking in from the left. Seriously y'all, that might be the fattest raccoon I've ever seen. So this is about as good a heat signature as you're ever gonna see from one on this unit. 
While we're at it, let's do a little bit more side-by-side -side comparison against the FLIR, and I'll go back to the hog. The greatest lesson that I learned from all this, it doesn't matter what you're looking through, if you spend too much time filming, a lost pig is a lost pig. So what was the verdict? I think it did a good job, but you do need to temper your expectations a little bit. It really depends on your application. If you're still hunting in timber and you only need to look 25, 50 yards, something like that, or you're looking for help retrieving down game, it's probably gonna do you just fine. If you're hunting out west or looking over vast expanses of land, hog hunting in Texas, for instance, you're gonna need to spend a little bit more, unfortunately, and get a little bit higher quality resolution. Overall though, I'm really happy that there's now something in the under $400 price point that more hunters can put into their packs to help them be more effective. That's it for us, you guys. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. We got a ton more content like this on the channel to help you be more successful in the outdoors. Thank you guys so much for being with us. God bless you.